Hey everyone, welcome back to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this series of videos, we're gonna start talking about communication patterns, starting with the protocol delegate. Protocol Delegate is a core communication pattern Apple uses extensively in its libraries for building iOS and Mac applications. And in this episode of the Swift Arcade, we're going to review what this pattern is, how it works, and why it's so important if you want to understand how to write great software for the iPhone and the Mac. All right, let's begin. Okay, so say you're an engineer working at Apple, and you need to design a window library so that when someone hits close, you ask their program first if it is safe to do so. How would you do it? Would you simply close the window? What if the user has unsaved information? How would you design a window library so that any object could plug in, any object could use it, and your window wouldn't care about why a subwindow should be closed, only that it should? Enter the protocol delegate pattern. Apple engineers solve this problem using the protocol delegate pattern. And it works like this. First, they define a protocol. Basically, a method that anyone can call and tell a window when it should or should not be closed. So in our case here, when someone hits that red button to close the window, our window asks the other people's code, hey, should this window close? That's called the delegate. We're delegating that responsibility to the client code, and they can call us back and say, you know what? No, don't close the window. I've got unsaved data. The beauty of this is we don't need to know what goes on in the delegate. That could be any code that anyone writes. We don't really care about what goes on in there. All we care about is that they've got a protocol that they can communicate back to us and tell us whether or not it's safe to do so. This pattern of protocol and delegation is used all over the Apple ecosystem. This is how our UI table views tell our view controllers when it's safe to display cells and headers and footers. It's how our text field works. That's how it tells us when it's safe to return, clear, or edit a text field and it's used in countless other libraries throughout Coco, UIKit, and if you see the words delegates, data sources, you know that you're dealing with a protocol delegate pattern. Now, of course, this pattern isn't just exclusive to Apple libraries. We can make use of it too. Say, for example, we've got a weather service, something that goes up there and fetches the weather. And when we hit a button on our app, we'd like it to go ahead and do that. The only problem is this is an asynchronous call and it could take a long time. We don't want to block the main thread here. How could we use the protocol delegate pattern to help us? Well, what we could do here is we could define a protocol called did fetch weather. We could then register our view controller to basically say, hey, I'd like to know when you did fetch the weather so you can call me back. We could then call the weather service and have it fetch the weather and after it asynchronously goes out there and does so, it can call back to us through our delegate, which we've registered ourselves as, and be notified that it did indeed fetch the weather. Okay, now if this all sounds really theoretical and hard to understand, don't worry, it is at first. Let's jump in there and take a look at some code and see how it works. Okay, so here we have a simple application. This is our weather service app. We're gonna hit this fetch weather button here. And when we do, it's gonna fire the protocol delegate pattern, go out there and do its work and come back and update the UI. Now, what I found really confusing about the protocol delegate pattern at first is just following the chain of messages as it goes from protocol to delegate, who's the protocol and who's the delegate. So let's walk through this code very slowly and just see what's going on. All right, let's start with that word protocol. So here is our weather service. This is the thing that we'd like to do some work and this is the thing where we need a common way for anyone to communicate back to us without us knowing what their code is or how it works. So we do that by defining a protocol. This is a common pattern you'll see for naming. You take the name of the object and you add the word delegate at the end and you call it the weather service delegate. Again, this is confusing. Remember, even though that has the word delegate in it, this is our protocol. So we define a protocol here and we add a method called did fetch weather. And now anyone in the world who wants to know when we have fetched the weather after going out and doing that long asynchronous call, all they have to do is implement this protocol and we will notify them by calling them back with this method passing the weather. So that's the protocol. Now in our case, our view controller wants to be the delegate. So when we fire up a view controller and we instantiate an instance to our weather service, 
we register ourselves as a delegate to the weather service here. Now note this is a weak var. Weak var in Swift means this is going to weakly hold a reference back to the object that is setting itself on us, in this case the view controller. This needs to be a weak var because we want to avoid these things called retain cycles. I'll probably do an episode later on those. But basically we want to avoid a strong reference between these two. One of them can be strong, meaning the view controller can strongly hold the weather service, but we want this link back to be weak so that they aren't leaking memory by strongly referencing each other. So we've instantiated the service, we've registered ourselves as the delegate, now we're more or less set. When we hit the fetch weather button here, that is going to call our weather service, have it go out and do a very long asynchronous network call. Of course here we're short circuiting it. And when it comes back and gets the weather, that's when it grabs its delegate and says, hey, I've got some weather for you. And it notifies the view controller that weather has indeed been uh, returned. And of course it does that by calling the protocol did fetch weather, which comes up here and calls our view controller did fetch weather. And then it is able to grab the weather and update the UI. And that's it. So let's just go over that again very quickly at a high level. We instantiate the service. We register ourselves as the delegate. We call the method, hey, go do some work. It does the work, and because it has a delegate pointing back to us, it's able to fire it back, and we're able to update our UI. That's a very simple example of how we as developers can use the protocol delegate pattern when building applications. Now there is a slight variation on the protocol delegate pattern called the data source pattern, and it works exactly the same way. Well, instead of a delegate always having to be called and told when something happens, like, hey, did fetch the weather, our delegates can also talk back to the objects that define the protocol themselves and supply them information like, hey, this is the city I'd like you to fetch the weather for. In code, that would look like this. Exact same protocol delegate setup, only here instead of the information always having to go from the object to the delegate, now the information can also flow from the delegate back to the object. And we do that using the exact same mechanics. We define a protocol, in this case for a data source, and we say this is the information our delegate has to supply us. We need our view controller to tell us what city to look up the weather for. Just like we did before with protocol delegate, our view controller registers itself as a data source for the object and says basically, yeah, I can tell you what city to look up the weather for. Then when we hit fetch weather and we go out there and make that call, just before we fetch the weather, we ask our data source, hey, can you tell me the city you'd like me to look up the weather for? And it goes, sure, no problem. The city is going to be San Francisco. Now you can go there and do your long-witted asynchronous call. And when you get the weather, just like we did before, let me know via the delegate and I will update the UI. And that's the data source pattern. Exact same as the protocol delegate, only instead of the information and communication going from the object to the delegate, it can also flow back from the delegate back to the object. All right, let's talk usage. A good time to use the protocol delegate pattern is whenever you're passing information back from a child to a parent view controller. That's a typical use case, just like we saw here. You wanna update the UI, some other objects doing that work for you. You can use the protocol delegate pattern to delegate back. The data source pattern is really nice if you don't always have the information you need at the time of processing, but it could be set up somewhere else. I've used this in applications where I need security tokens, for example, in my application, and I'm not sure exactly when they're going to be set as part of that login process. So I have my web services uh, query data sources asking for authentication tokens, and that's how I make sure that information is available throughout the application by using that data source pattern. Now the pros to this pattern are, this is nice strict syntax. In other words, you get all the compile time checks. You can have multiple protocols used uh, in various view controllers. You can delegate and communicate back. It's a really clear and nice pattern uh, for clearly communicating what is going on. There's no magic, there's nothing hidden here. The cons, well, it takes you know a few lines of code. You do need to watch those retain cycles. Remember, if you are working with classes, which we typically are in UIKit with view controllers, uh, you do need to make that a weak var when you instantiate a delegate in your object. 
And it can just appear strange at first. I remember when first getting into iOS and Objective-C, uh, it was a really strange pattern and there's a bit of a learning curve uh, to understanding it. But once you've gone through the learning curve and once you see how this works, I think this is a really wonderful pattern. It's really clear, it works really well. It's a core part of UIKit and Coco, so you're gonna see it used throughout the iOS ecosystem. And I think it's really good if you understand how it works and how to use it. All right, that's it. Well, congratulations. Now you understand how protocol delegate, data source patterns work, and you're free to go ahead and use those in your own applications. Source code for all this you can find on GitHub. If you'd like to be notified when future episodes are coming out, please follow me on Twitter. And if you'd like to continue to see more episodes like this, just hit subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All right, have fun, everyone. Good luck with your programs out there. We'll see you next time.